Hey guys, this is Tommy from storagefreak.net. In this video, I want to show you how easy it is to create a virtual machine with Apache 2 web server, reserve IP address so you guarantee that your IP address of your compute instance will not change, and how to use Cloud DNS to attach external domain name to your web server. I will call my instance tomectk web server because the domain I'm going to use is tomek.tk. And since this is going to be web server, let's allow HTTP traffic on the firewall level and on the management security disk networking on section, let's install startup script that will add Apache 2 and change the default web page. As you can see, I already prepared the script. It's quite simple. Just update the packages, install Apache 2 and replace the content of the default index HTML page. All right, let's navigate to the networking section and in the network interfaces, change the default settings for the external IP address. Let's create IP address. We'll have to give it a name. Let me call it tomectk-ip so it's easy to recognize what's it about. Reserve. And this way, we're going to get the um, static IP address that will not change between the boots. That's quite important when you're planning to use uh, this IP into your DNS configuration. All right, I think that's all changes we need. Let's click create. And after, I don't know, less than a minute, the web server should be more or less ready. It is. It probably needs more time to execute the startup script. But let's see what's going on with this external IP. To check that, I will navigate to VPC network external IP address. There it is, the table with our booked IP addresses. We could reserve another one from this place and later on attach it to our new or already existing virtual machines. And since I'm already in VPC network, let's check the firewall rules for HTTP traffic. Also exist TCP on port 80 with network tag HTTP server. I will navigate back to my compute instance and verify the correct network tag is also attached to the VM. Of course it is, but just to show you how you can check that in case of troubleshooting. Let me edit the view, adding network tags into the column, and the network tag is attached. Perfect. So let's verify our web server. And it works. We see our welcome page, welcome to atomic.tk. All right, so let's configure our DNS. We're going to use Cloud DNS for that, but you know what, actually before I do so, let me just copy my external IP address. It's going to be useful during the DNS configuration. Okay, navigating to the networking section yet again, but this time to networking services and cloud DNS. I will proceed with creating the new DNS zone and to give it some unique name, I will call it tomectk-zone. <laughs> And DNS name is my domain, so tomek.tk, and that's pretty much it. That was quick, wasn't it? We already see our name service, but let's add the record set. The first one we're going to add is of type A, that will point the root of our domain to the IP address. I told you the IP will be useful, right? All right, that's it. Let's click create. And let's add one more record set, this time of a type C name that will point uh, the prefix www to our root domain. So type C name, www, and the canonical name. Notice that the canonical domain name are written down with an extra dot at the end. Let's click create, and after just a few seconds, everything is set. And we are done. Our cloud DNS is configured. Now all we have to do is to configure the domain with the given name servers. You can see the record type of NS. My network provider for the domain is Freenom, where I have my free tomek.tk domain registered. You can use any of the domain providers you wish at this step. This one has, well, quite mixed opinions on the web, but I think it's fine for the test purposes. So there is my domain. I have to click manage domain. If you work with another provider, just find the section where you can edit the name service of your domain. Mine section is over here. Time to copy the name service I'm given by the cloud DNS. Uh, they also have dot at the end, so that's how it's supposed to be. Let me copy all four of them and speed up the video for a second so you don't have to wait. The last step is to save the changes and I'm really done. 
Now, we have to wait a little bit, because DNS is a great example of eventual consistency protocol. It means that the changes I just made will be eventually consistent across the internet, but it might take some time. Very often it takes just a couple of minutes before the changes are propagated, but it might take a couple of hours before it will be propagated for the most of the locations. I will increase the speed of this video to wait a couple of minutes before I will test the output. Ok, I'm feeling optimistic. Let's check if the host will reply on the ping via domain name. Pinging Tomek TK and success. We see already our IP address. That seems uh, promising. Let's verify the web page by going to tomek.tk and also uh, it's opening. So as you can see it was, I don't know, 4 minutes maybe. Now if you have a configuration in place you can also use PuTTY to establish SSH session to your host as well. Also using the domain name, accepting the fingerprint and as you can see I have the login page. Let me cancel that and start with the cleanup. I will increase the tempo a little bit but the order of my cleanup is first I will delete the VM instance since I don't need it anymore. Then I will navigate to the cloud DNS, enter my zone and first delete the record sets because I have to remove them before I will be able to remove the whole DNS zone. Once this is done, if the VM deletion in the background completed, I will be able to release the reserved IP address. This can only be done once the IP is not in use. It's a nice safety switch, right? Ok, just release the IP address and I'm done. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something today. Subscribe to my channel for more GCP related tutorials and see you in the next video. Bye.